Hello, my name is Pit Kerner and I'm a Physics Engineering Master Student at the Technical Institute of Lisbon. Today, in this video, I'll talk to you about my Master Thesis project. In one word, my Master project will be about vacuum. You might imagine vacuum a bit like this. Well, nothing. In fact, the theory of quantum mechanics proves that unlike this image, the true vacuum is not really this empty. In 1930, British physicist Paul Dirac proposed that the vacuum was filled with an infinite sea of electrons with negative energy. But why did he need to propose such a crazy idea? Well, the solution of Dirac's equations showed that an electron could have a negative energy. But wait, how can a free particle have a negative energy? Does physics even allow this? Many physicists thought that the negative energy solutions were not physical, for if they were, a free electron could not be stable, as he could always fall into a level of smaller and smaller energy. To solve this problem, Dirac proposed that the negative energy levels were occupied by an infinite sea of electrons. Ok, so maybe this idea of the infinite sea is true. It does, after all, seem to solve some problems. But do these electrons produce consequences that we can see? The answer is yes, there are fascinating consequences. For example, much like in the hydrogen atom, if an electron in this negative C is giving enough energy, by absorbing a photon for example, it can be excited into a positive energy, leaving behind a hole. This hole must have a positive charge and the same mass of an electron and is what we nowadays call a positron. This process is called pair production and you can think of it as the vacuum being excited by light to produce matter. This is also called vacuum polarization. However, the energy required for this to occur is orders of magnitude above the energy of light that we can produce today on Earth. So, is there another way to detect the existence of the quantum vacuum? The answer is yes, and will be the topic of my master thesis. The theory behind this work was developed by German physicists Heisenberg and Euler that showed in 1935 that light with energy below this minimum threshold could create what are known as vacuum fluctuations. In theory, this is only possible due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle relates the uncertainty in an energy to that of a respective time interval in which this energy uncertainty exists. It is as if an electron positron pair was created for such a small instant of time and then annihilated back to the original vacuum in a period of time allowed by the uncertainty principle such that the missing energy would be covered by this uncertainty. This is also known as the creation of a virtual pair since no real particles are created. Nevertheless, this changes the way light propagates in vacuum by changing Maxwell's equations which determine the behavior of light. The quantum effects modify Maxwell's equations in vacuum from this set of equations to this. The new equations are similar to what you would expect for light propagating in a medium with a given polarization and magnetization given by the following expressions. Furthermore, the parameter that weighs the relative importance of the corrections is chi, which is of the order of 10 to the minus 51. This is indeed very, very small. Therefore, looking at the new equations, it is clear that very large fields are still necessary to make these quantum corrections important. The objective of my master thesis is to create a computational tool that can solve the Maxwell modified equations to calculate the evolution of the electromagnetic fields in time. This tool will then be inserted in a particle and cell code OSIRIS. A particle and cell code can simulate the evolution of plasma systems under extreme conditions by solving the Maxwell's equations for the fields and the equations of motions for the particles. Therefore, a result in this work will be that the particles in the plasma will be able to evolve according to the fields that are corrected to these quantum effects. Scenarios where these corrections might be relevant include the surrounding of neutron stars and pulsar magnetospheres. These are regions populated with plasma where the fields created by these astrophysical objects are large enough such that the quantum effects can become important in the overall dynamics of the system. As far as the Earth is concerned, with existing technology, the best way to produce intense fields 
is at the peak of laser pulses. The code developed in this work will be able to simulate the propagation of such extreme laser pulses in the presence of the quantum fluctuations. Furthermore, this work comes in an exciting era where new laser facilities able to produce light with unprecedented intensities to probe the quantum vacuum are being built. These include the Extreme Light Infrastructures, ELI, and the Vulcan Project. This means that the tool to be developed will come in a time where experiments are being planned to detect these vacuum fluctuations, giving this work a great advantage as we will be able to simulate interesting experimental setups that can be created in the near future. I would like to thank you for watching this video and hope that after this, if nothing else, you will think of the vacuum in a different way. I would also like to thank everybody in my research group, Group of Lasers and Plasmas, part of IPFN, for the excellent working atmosphere. Please check out our website or Facebook page for cool pictures of videos and images of our simulations. Thank you once again.